Okay, we'll get started. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Karim Down Secondary College Grade 6 Information Night. Oh, just trying to hang on. Sorry, this is what you get with technology online, isn't it? Uh, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are gathered here today and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So welcome to our school. Um, we're very excited to have you join. Um, and yeah, I'll introduce the principal team. So first up, we have uh, Mr. Mark Gow, our principal. Um, I am Jeanette Kalatsis. I'm currently acting principal. We've got Dave Gobel, who is assistant principal, and Vanessa Coco, who's assistant principal as well. So I'll just keep this brief. So Mark is back next week, um, but he sends his positive regards to all of you, and he is very excited to meet you on orientation day. So it is such an exciting time to start high school, but it can be very daunting, especially for parents and carers, as well as the students. So what I can assure you is that um, we make sure that everyone um, can transition to high school very smoothly. And later on, we'll tell you about some extra transition days and some of the activities that we have um, to make sure that your child transitions nice and smoothly to high school. We are always here to help, so please make sure you contact us at the college. One of the differences that you might face and find is that at primary school, you can just go into the classroom and have a chat to the teacher. But here, it's a little bit different and you might find that your child doesn't want that because they want a bit of independence. So we would like to just say that we, we really still encourage that parent communication. So make sure that you do contact us um, and yeah, you can have a meeting and things like that. So it's very similar to primary school, but they might just want you a little bit, little bit away. <laughs> um, so... We have lots of um, high expectations here um, and we want students to achieve their personal best. So it doesn't matter if they're not, um, that they might need a little bit more support or they need to be extended. As long as they try their best and achieve growth at the level that they need, I think that that shows success. Um, as you can see on the screen, um, we've got our college vision and our college values of respect, integrity and effort are what we live by every day and you'll hear later on that students are um, acknowledged for that um, through our rewards program. So look, we just really hope that students have such a fun time at high school and really immerse yourself in all the activities that school has to offer. Um, I know that you're probably thinking getting to grade six, how did my child get to grade six? But also soon enough, your child will get to year 12 and you'll be saying the same thing. So to all the students out there, Make sure you give everything a go at high school and have um, a fantastic experience. So when you're in year 12, you can think back and think, oh, I gave it, gave it my best shot. So that's it from me. Um, I'll hand over to Vanessa Coco to talk a little bit um, about the house structure. I will unmute you, sorry. <laughs> Technology again. Okay, I'm on. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa, um, currently uh, Acting Assistant Principal, um, Leading Student Engagement and Wellbeing. So I'll just run through a couple of the structures and, and processes that we have in place um, for all our students at the college um, that really help to promote engagement um, and wellbeing. So first of all, um, our house structure. So very much similar probably to high school. Um, your child probably had a house they were in. The houses at Carrum Downs have a lot more meaning. They very much become a family um, for your child and they'll remain in the house that they started in year seven for the entire six years that they're with us at Carrum Downs. So basically every student will be assigned to a house and all the teachers in the school are actually assigned to a house as well. Um, and I'll get into later, there's a bit of competitiveness with the houses, which adds to the fun. Um, but yeah, like I said before, the houses are very much um, a one-stop shop. Um, so in regards to attendance, learning, well being um, and even behaviour, uh, you will hear from the staff members in the house. So the house teams are built up of four core members um, or, or basically a team. So it starts with the house leader. They oversee all the students. Uh, two assistant house leaders work alongside them. And we also have house support officers uh, in the office as well. Really, um, these are the people that you'll probably have the most contact with in regards to teachers. We're kind of your first point of contact. Um, 
um, with the school and then we can help delegate to other staff members who you may like to talk to or need support from as well. So um, you'll get to know your house leadership team of your child uh, next year quite well. Um, and we work really hard in the houses to get to know the students right from the beginning. Um, we do check-ins and we'll introduce ourselves over the phone to you all. Um, and you'll really get to know us, like I, like I said. Um, so throughout the years, um, we really find that this helps because your child stays in the house team for the whole six years. You really do build connectedness um, with us as staff and also with the students and families as well. Um, each of the houses have their own locker base. So the students also get to mingle with the different um, kids in the different year levels to them who are in the same house. So each of the four houses has their own bay and we run lots of different opportunities throughout the years, uh, throughout the year, sorry, for the students to um, work together as a house and really build a sense of pride. Uh, speaking of pride, uh, the House Cup is our annual House Cup runs every year. Do you want to flick to the next slide for us, Jeanette? Thank you so much. Oh, other way. There we go. Uh, the House Cup runs every year. So we have an annual House Cup. And again, probably very similar to primary school, you can earn house points. Now we have lots of opportunities. You can see lots of images there of our students engaging in different activities. Lots of opportunities throughout the year um, for students to um, earn house points for their house. So from sports activities, carnivals, trivia competitions, online competitions, students can be awarded house points for NAPLAN results or other academic achievements. Uh, so this year we just announced our 2022 uh, winners, our House Cup champions. We do that early in term four so the year 12s can also be a part of the celebration before they finish up. And Flynn House, Green House were our winners this year. So they're the ones to beat um, and we can't wait for you all to get involved next year and help your house be the best. Uh, On to SWPBS. So very much in line with our um, house system, we have our SWPBS framework. Um, now this is a um, framework that we use at the college to promote positive behaviour. Jeanette mentioned our three college values um, uh, earlier in the presentation, sorry. And uh, we really promote these throughout each and every day. So our PBS framework is an opportunity for us to teach and recognise when students are exemplifying our three college values, respect, integrity and effort. So probably the most talked about aspect of our PBS program is our acknowledgement system, our STAR system. So throughout the day, both in the yard and the classroom, students have the opportunity to earn STARS. And that's that little ticket that's on the screen now that you can see. Basically, uh, teachers will award these to students when they've demonstrated a behaviour that's in line with those college values. Uh, the good thing about these is not only that instant recognition from the teachers, but they are also almost like a form of money that we can use. Um, and we have a star shop on a Thursday that runs. And once students accumulate a specific number of stars, um, they can go to the shop on a Thursday at lunchtime and they can spend their stars on lots of different things. So there's physical things they can purchase and um, experiences uh, and it's a very successful program that we only started a few years ago but it's really taken off and the students really love it um, and really appreciate that recognition through this uh, framework that we have so it's very positive and it really allows us to celebrate um, the good things that are happening at Caram Down Secondary. Uh, on to other good and successful things, leadership. We have an awesome student leadership program at Caram Downs um, and we love hearing from the Year 7s when they come through, when they've been leaders in, in primary school and they're keen to get involved. Uh, not unfortunately, but something to look forward to. Our leadership program is um, accessible to students from year eight onwards. And the reason for that is because we do all the interviewing and applying and, and all those processes now in term four to be able to set the students up to start straight away, all guns blazing in the following year. So we have lots of opportunities for students to get involved in student leadership. Each year, there's actually 48 positions that become available across the houses. So you can see some of them listed there. The only ones that are applicable only to senior students are the house and school captains. Junior students have the opportunity to apply for all the other positions as well. Um, and we really encourage it. We had a really great pool of students apply uh, just this term for next year's applications. And they're very excited. We had lots of year sevens going into year eight who've applied. Um, and they're very keen to express their voice an agency and be a part of the school. This is their school and we love hearing their ideas um, and we really see them thrive in 
our leadership program. I will say to the next year's Year 7s, if you are keen on leadership, even though um, you may not have a position next year, we really encourage you to get involved. Speak to your house team um, once you're assigned that next year and see how you can be involved in the student leadership team. I'm more than certain that they would welcome you with open arms and any ideas and contributions that you wanted to make. So it's a very exciting program and something to really look forward to and aspire to in your futures. Just a couple more from me. So our pastoral care program, um, otherwise maybe known as like a um, home group, it kind of used to be called and we run it a little bit differently to a home group. It's not run every day. So a part, our pastoral care program runs once a week on a Tuesday. And I think uh, Dave or Jeanette will talk about the uh, day structure a little bit later. But on a Tuesday, we have a little bit of a different day and pastoral care becomes a part of the day. This is a time when we really focus on um building student strengths in areas like respectful relationships, resilience, building relationships with one another. Sometimes we have incursions or excursions um, and, and it's a really good time for students to have a little bit of a chill out with their peers and do some learning on human skills basically um, and being good people. So we really find the partial care program has been successful running in this way um, and it gives the students, especially the seniors who once they start learning all different subjects and not maybe staying together in their partial care class they get to see each other once a week and reconnect and stay connected to their house and their class so that's our partial care program uh, and lastly from me is our student wellbeing support. So wellbeing is obviously an incredibly important support uh, that we require at school. And especially after the lockdowns, it's become incredibly prominent. Uh, we have lots of different things to offer um, in our wellbeing program. So to give you a bit of an idea of the structure of our support. So we have three wellbeing counsellors, a mental health practitioner and a provisional psychologist, all who work on site with us. We also have a doctors in schools program. So that was a pilot program um, started by the government a few years ago and we were luckily enough to be a part of it and it's continued at our school it runs once a week we have um, a nurse on site um, whose students can book in to see for um, medical appointments as well which is a really great resource in terms of things um, that are accessible to all students, wellbeing is open to every student at our college. Um, and we really encourage both students and all parents and guardians to reach out to us if they feel that wellbeing support is something that their student would benefit from. Um, so again, that's something that can go through our one-stop shop in the houses. Um, so you can reach out and request that your child um, see our wellbeing support team. Um, we do a check-in anyway with all our year sevens in term one. So every year seven student will see um, well-being and then we can sort of go from there in terms of what supports are needed. Um, I will also add we do get some um, information passed on from primary schools in regards to student well-being but if there is anything that you think in, is important for us to know about your child um, before they start next year we do encourage you to reach out to the college um, and when you ring through to reception they'll put you through to the relevant people um, to discuss anything that you think is important. Um, so well-being run things like lunchtime programs as well there's breakfast Breakfast club in the morning um, and they have lots of different programs and groups um, that they run in well-being to support mental health and well-being and I believe that's it from me. Thank you. Oh just just before Dave sorry um just if I haven't answered your question in the chat we'll just address <laughs> it at the end so um we'll keep going through um we'll go through the classes now what you're going to be doing. Thanks, Jeanette. She just had to unmute me. There's a few little extra restrictions. Anyway, g'day. Um, good evening. I'm Dave Goebel. I'm um, one of the assistant principals and I look after teaching, teaching and learning. Um, so there have been a few pieces in the chat in regards to curriculum for Year 7 students next year. So all Year 7 students will complete our core subjects, um, English, Maths, Humanity, Science and PE and Health. Um, and in that, we also run a STEAM class as well for all students in Year 7. Um, and over the course of their Year 7 and 8 programs, the Year 7s or the students will be exposed to a variety of electives. Um, for the Year 7s, all Year 7 students next year will um, have art, digital technologies, uh, drama and woodwork. Um, and they'll do each of those for one semester each. 
Um, so they'll double up. So they might have art and digital technologies for first semester. So the first half of the year and then second half of the year, they'll do drama and woodwork. And then that will be dependent on what class they're in and how that works. But every student's exposed to those core classes. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more about the English and maths next. Um, STEAM is a new program we have been trialling this year at the college. This year we've run a year seven and year nine STEAM program and next year we're continuing on into eight and year 10 as well. Um, we spend our time in STEAM working and supporting the students through developing their creativity um, through following a design pro um, process to problem solve scenarios and, and develop their skills that they use, uh, that they're learning in their other classes. Um, some of the big things that we really introduce in STEAM is the concept of engineering and then present, uh, presenting designs and design briefs whilst also reporting on um, projects constructed. So this year, the Year 7s um, produced Rube Goldberg machines, um, CO2 powered dragsters that shot the length of a double classroom on a, on a guide. Um, and we had competitions with that to see which one was the fastest, which one was the most creative in design, which one went the furthest. Um, and this term, we've started our programming journey with the students where all students in year seven in STEAM are programming Spheros. I know some primary schools are using Spheros already, um, but we're programming Spheros. And the goal by the end of the term will be to have a golf tournament with the Spheros. Each, each group is designing their own golf course or their own go golf hole. Um, to have a bit of a tournament at the end and each student will have to um, program their Sphero to complete the course. Um, moving in, we are currently in the process of building our new STEAM centre. We've had a big week on this um, and hopefully construction will start in, well, this year, later on this year, um, with a hope, oh, well, it will be completed. I'm, I'm going to put it out there. It will be completed next year, um, ready for students to be in for 2024. Um, but it's a really big project. Um, you'll be able to drive past Brunnings Road over the next month and hopefully start seeing the construction starting. So a very exciting time for our STEAM program and the college. English and maths at Cairn Down Secondary College run a little different than a standard secondary college. Um, we do what we call a targeted teaching model. And this is where we assess students' um, skills in, certain, in all topics before we create, uh, before we start a unit, and then we group those students dependent on their skills and their strengths. Um, from here, we target the teaching at the individual student groupings level, um, so we can better support the students at their point of need. We introduced the program in 2019 with really good success. Um, our students grow really well in the program. Um, they are allowed to enter it at an area where they feel confident and, and they can build that confidence up really quickly by being able to access the learning. Um, the program is evolving a little bit next year. If you currently have students at the college, um, we're changing it a little bit next year where we're going to split one of the groups. So the class sizes will be, will be quite small. Um, we'll have about a one to 12 ratio for some of the some of the classes, which will allow for better engagement with the stu uh, student teachers. Um, the best thing about this program is it, it's, it's fluid um, and, and it's a fluid grouping model, which means that the students can move in different groups over the course of the year, dependent on where their skills are. If they're really good with measurement, uh, you know, they'll be in a measurement group where they're really extending the students. However, if they struggle with measurement, they'll be in a group where they are able to work on those base skills. But then when they move to fractions, they might be really good at fractions and they weren't at measurement. So then they'll change grouping and still be able to push themselves and extend themselves as much as they can. We also have a fantastic music and performance program. We run college productions. Hopefully you've been able to attend some of them. Um, we also have our concert band and stage band. 
um, running at the college and they perform at assemblies, um, awards night and at tournaments around the state. All year seven students will be able to have a trial of the instruments we offer in our music program in term one. So they can have a bit of a, if they haven't tried the trumpet before, they can come along and have a blow and see if they like it, or they might want to try the guitar or drums. So it's a fantastic broke program. Bev will talk about it a little bit more later, but the best thing is we've got a year seven training band. So they all end up, you know, if they're new to an instrument, they're not thrown in the deep end. They all learn together. But if your child is already learning an instrument, um, the music program will move them up into a different band to, I suppose, extend them as well. So we're quite fluid and we want to be able to target where the students need their learning. As Vanessa mentioned, our day structure is quite different to, to primary school. We start at 8.50 every morning and go to 3.10 Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The big difference for our college is Tuesdays where we have slightly shorter periods throughout the day. Doesn't change the start time on a Tuesday, but the students are dismissed from the college at 1.50. Um, after 1.50, the teachers spend a huge amount of time in what we call professional learning communities, where we spend time developing our skills and, and looking at the data the students of the college are presenting to us in, in our lessons to um, be able to better target student learning and, and improve those outcomes. So we use that time of an afternoon on a Tuesday afternoon to really develop and learn where our students are at at a very deep level. So we know where we need to target and use our time to support all students in the college. A um, few comments around the BYOD program. So all students from seven to 12 are required to have their own laptop computer. A um, few questions down, I'll run through this and I'll chop and change a little bit, but all devices need to be a laptop. They, any brand's fine, but they need to be classified as a laptop. And the real tricky part here is they can't be a tablet they, and they cannot be a Chromebook. The department server that we work on is, is not supportive of that. So no Chromebooks and no, and no iPads or tablets. Um, that, that's the big thing. There will be, there's a flyer in your enrollment pack with all the details for the BYOD program, but it's really important that all students have that device. So right now when we're coding in our STEAM program, um, all students need their computer to be able to code the spheros. Um, that's just really important, but it's also we're running Education Perfect next year across the college, um, which is an online resource to support, I suppose, a different learning style for all students. And that's going to be really important to have their laptops at school. One of the big benefits of having a laptop at school is textbooks. We are more than happy for stu students to have digital textbooks. Um, it means they don't have to cart around big bulky books every single day. It's just they need to be organised and have their laptop ready every day with their books on it. So it's a really good program. There's lots of um, support, I suppose, at the college for tech support, but also Bev will chat a little bit more about this in terms of what's accessible to all families. Um, Attendance. So our college has a 95% attendance policy, which means, you know, we can miss five days out of 100. Um, so that 95% attendance policy is something we have as a policy at the college. Education is so important and being at school every day is so important. Missing one day, we start losing connection to the content. We start losing connection to our friends. We start losing connection to where the class is at and then our confidence dips. Being at school every day is so important. We do understand sometimes that's not able to happen. So we've got a really strong support program through our wellbeing team, as Vanessa mentioned, but also we love that communication with the house. So if your child's going to be absent, please notify the house um, through the phone calls you'll be able, uh, through the phone numbers that you will get in impacts and we will present out next year as well, but also by calling the front office 
However, we would love it if you jumped on Compass and really used Compass to engage with this. So you can put your child's absence directly on the Compass without making a phone call to the college, takes a couple of minutes, and then we know what to expect each day for your child. Um, so that's really good for us as well. If your child is going to be late, we'd love you to send them with just a quick little note, and then they pop into their house office to sign in. And then from there, we just put them into the computer and send them off to class nice and easy. Regular late, we get a little concerned, so we wanna call home and just make sure everything's all right. So we're pretty on top of our attendance. Um, and we will be calling home regularly if if your child seems to be missing, whether it's support or or whether they're just sick. We you know we'll want to know. So thank you. And the last one from me, which will roll straight into Bev, is something very exciting for our Year Sevens, and that's Year Seven Camp, kicking off early next year, Wednesday the twenty second of Feb. They will leave for Kyrton. Camp Capacity Downs PGL Adventure Camp. It is a fair trip away. It's about two and a bit hour drive north of the city. It's um, a bit wet at the moment, so I'm sure they'll be all right, though. It's a fantastic site. The activities are incredible. They've got a massive dam in the middle of it where the students canoe, raft building, flying fox. Um, they can, there's ropes courses. Um, the kids go from pretty much seven in the morning till nine o'clock at night it's pretty intense believe it or not they normally go to sleep pretty well because they're so tired because it's so packed but they all have a fantastic time there so it's a great little camp we've got going on um and yeah so 22nd of feb really important will be permission forms and dietaries they will be out in your enrollment packs and because it's the 22nd of feb we need those forms in pretty quickly so if you can send, if you can feel free to drop me in any time from when you receive them. Um, but yes, those forms are something we'll chase up pretty quickly next year, um, just so we can tick off everything for the camp. And that will lead into Bev Boys. Good evening. I get to help you with all the finance and the resources. My name's Bev. I'm happy to meet with any parents to also provide individual support. School fees, as you probably read, are all voluntary now. The government does not give us any extra assistance, so we appreciate whatever payments you make. You don't have to pay at all. The only things that are, require central payment are music fees and also the Year 7 camp. If you're on CSCF, um, you can use your $225, your CSCF funds, to go towards the camp. And if you are still struggling to for financial assistance, that is also available. Basically, what we're saying is finance is not a reason for a student not to be able to attend a camp. Just contact the office. Uh, I'll meet with you. I'll talk to you over the phone, and we will provide that assistance for you so that your students can go. A suspension CSCF is $225, so that goes a long way. The other fee that is essential is the $50, which is the carnival's cost, covers the swimming carnival, athletics carnival, cross country fun, or the fun run, and any inter school sports the students might undertake, all for $50. That you can use CSCF or can pay for it. We're happy to work with you to support you on this. With your book list, um, they are online, which you can access, and we can also provide support there. The book list, the Year 7 books for 2023 are the same as 2022. You can purchase them secondhand. There is a Facebook page, which is run by parents. It's Karen Downs Secondary College, Secondhand Textbooks and Uniform. And that's a great way to access them. If you are struggling to purchase the textbooks or even secondhand, please contact the office. I'm happy to meet with you and we will provide support as required. Music is does have an essential fee because it's an extracurricular activity. You do need to pay for this. It's $300 per instrument for the year. That also covers the hire of the instrument except for percussion because you can't take the drums backwards and forwards and 
think you might, because guitar is pretty cheap, I'm not sure that there's enough guitars to hire out for everybody. But when it comes to trombones and flutes, woodwind and brass instruments, we do provide those as part of the $300. Uh, I noticed someone's mentioned keyboard. That also is an option, um, but we don't have those that you can take to and from school because they're just too big and bulky. So keyboard, piano fits in together. There's also voice lessons, all $300 per instrument. Um, with the laptops, we recommend that they're charged at home. You can bring charges to school, but we don't encourage students to charge them in the classrooms purely because we can't have cords everywhere. They just create tripping hazards for everybody. There are stations set up in the library that students may charge their laptops during recess and lunch just to provide extra support. If you are struggling to purchase a laptop or not sure what to purchase, you'll find the details under enrolments, what to purchase, what can be purchased, or if you make an appointment to see me, we can also issue you with your student with a laptop that they use. They take it to and from school, uh, charge it at night. It basically becomes theirs to use. And all we request then is that students have a lock on their locker purely for safety so that they can lock it if they're not using it at recess and lunch. School sales locks, they're $25. And these locks will see the students um, for the whole six years without a problem. We do know that they regularly work. Uh, otherwise, uniform, you would have had the package about the uh, year seven uniform uniforms available through state schools relief with the shoes, the shirts, shorts and trousers. Um, state schools relief provides them first up. Uh, but please, please measure your students because even though the size might look wrong, state schools relief sizes are a little bit out of whack. So that's why you need to go with what's on the size sheet, not what you might normally buy. If you select the dress, they will provide you with a voucher. Uh, this covers, doesn't cover the full cost, is about $25 out of pocket. Once again, for those people that might be struggling, there is support, just please come and touch base with me and we can provide it. Notice someone's written black runners for school shoes. School shoes have got to be school shoes. Black lace up shoes, um, except for, or black lace up shoes for all, but you can, boys can wear the slip on business type shoes if they prefer those. But otherwise it's black lace up shoes, no T bars. And the socks must be no logos. They can be anklets, they can be a little bit higher, just what your student chooses, but no logos. Um, yeah, the uniform is pretty gender neutral. Girls can wear shorts, trousers, dress, skirt, whatever they choose that way. The rugby top, um, they can wear that all day, every day if they wish. The same with the jacket, it can be worn inside. Uh, the school jumper is showing there. You can no longer buy the school jumper, but we do have some to provide if you would like. The reason we've done away with that is the kids don't like wearing them. School jumpers are cool and they will say they're itchy, but the kids love the rugby top. For PE, there's a new PE polo next year, an updated version. But at the same time, if you have a secondhand one, you might have another student that's outgrown one or bought one secondhand, they can still wear the navy blue sports t-shirts. They don't look as good, but they're still welcome to wear them. Um, and we'll have those still going for the next couple of years. Then it will be totally phased out and it will just be the PE polo. Okay, I think I've, oh, the lockers, every student will get a locker when they first start. Um, you can bring your own lock. We recommend the combination locks. And if you purchase them through the school, we have a master key to unlock them. And in a lot of cases, we've also got the combinations, which we can provide if the students forget them. Uh, canteen, canteen's open every day before school, recess and lunch. Students can place an order online through Compass before school. Alternatively, they can give an order directly to the canteen staff um, before school, so it's ready at recess and lunch. Payment at the canteen is cash or card. Can't use their telephones, they must actually have their um, FPOS card, whether it's a debit card, credit card. Many students prefer to use this. 
uh, no, no extra charge for doing it. Canteen has a variety of menu items. Some are special, which change daily, but they also have wraps, sandwiches, drinks, uh, flavoured milks, fruit juices, and you uh, have dim sims, party pies, party sausage rolls, meat pies, sausage rolls. And there's also some sort of hot wrap, hot dog, or a chicken sub, which is chicken strips in a bread roll with some lettuce. And the students can ask for tomatoes or other things in there if they would like. Cafe 263 is open to the public, but it is actually only open to our year 11 and 12 students. It's a privilege that they get as they move further up the school. Parents are more than welcome to come in, have a cup of coffee um, and see the other side of the school. It's up to you. Can, the cafe is open from eight till two o'clock every school day of the year. It's not open um, on school holidays. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Um, just to just to finish off the PE talk. So students, if they have PE period one, can come dressed in their PE uniform, but they have to bring their school uniform as well to change back into. And if they have PE period five, they can leave in their PE uniform. So they will need both sets of uniform. Best to have it in a plastic bag with them um, so they can get changed um, through the day, okay? Um, so extra transition day. So as I said earlier, it is a little bit, um, some, some students need a little bit extra support to transition, okay? So what we have coming up, um, and it is by appointment only, so you need to make sure you've booked into these. Um, we have some extra transition days. So there's some morning sessions which run on the three Tuesdays prior to orientation day. Um, so students can become used to the school. The, what will happen in these sessions are school tours um, and they'll end up doing um, an activity uh, some sort of class activity, whether it's art, PE, etc. So these students uh, sessions are for students who have inclusion and wellbeing support needs. Um, so if you feel your child fits into these categories, uh, please, you can either notify your primary school or you can contact us at the college. Um, on the Thursday before um, orientate, I think I've actually got the wrong date there, sorry. It will be the 8th, my apologies. It'll be Thursday, the 8th of December. Um, if you your child is um, the only person coming from their primary school or only a couple of them there, we are sending invites out to you guys. Um, and that session will be um, in the morning as well from 9 to 11. Same thing. It's an opportunity to meet um to meet some other students. So then when you have orientation day, um, you've got a familiar face there. So that's something that we do as well, but just keep in mind that's Thursday, the 8th of December. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, we've already had some families ringing up, which is fantastic. We've got Sam or Samantha Yo um, or myself, um, and you can contact us um, with any questions at all. Um, we've already started with some um, individual learning plans for some um, students as well, just so we have that already ready. Um, now, this is another thing just down the bottom in the smaller font. Uh, we are currently creating classes for all of our year sevens. Now, we get a lot of the information from the primary school about um, who works well together um, and about some um, learning needs and social um, how, how you are, how students are socially, academically, um, emotionally, and all of that. Um, so we um, make our roles according to that, and we really try to make sure that there is someone from their primary school. They won't be in the whole class with their primary school, but if you have um, any requests, um, we do obviously take what the primary school says, um, I guess, first, but we do welcome parents to contact. Um, so if you can contact Samantha, um, in regards to that, you are welcome to if you are concerned about that. Okay, orientation day is on Tuesday the 13th of December. Now, this is statewide, so all students um, need to come to this 
whatever school they're going to, okay? Um, so they need to be dropped off by you. So instead of dropping them at the primary school, they are dropped off at um, the high school. So this is just an example of what a day will look like. So they'll meet in the gym at 8.50 um, and they'll have their welcome assembly. I think I've actually said nine o'clock on the form. So if you've got nine o'clock is okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then, um, yeah, you'll get your house and you'll find out your pastoral care class. So instead of calling it um, like a home group, we call it a pastoral care care class here. Um, period two, you'll follow your timetable. You'll have recess. Three and four, you'll follow your timetable. So you actually have classes like English, maths, science, etc. Um, lunch and then period five, you'll have sort of a question and answer. You'll meet your house um, and you're dismissed at three o'clock. What you need to bring is a drink bottle, um, your snacks, lunch, pen and, a, and paper, like a notebook maybe. Um, we do provide things, but just so you're, you are prepared with that. Um, and you just wear your primary school uniform and your runners, okay? So you just basically wear what you'd wear to primary school to the high school. All right, so what does the first day of year seven look like? So we are starting on Tuesday, the 31st of January. The first two days, so staff are back on um, the Friday prior to that um, and the Monday are curriculum days. And what we've decided to do this year is have only our year sevens, 11s and 12 students on that Tuesday. Um, and what's great, we know we have the early finish on Tuesday at 1.50, so it's a great start for year seven um, just to get used to the school. Um, so we say farewell in the morning. Morning. We're like, goodbye, we're starting our high school journey. Um, we do a welcome assembly in the gym. We go through a lot of expectations and things like that. So I know there's a lot of information tonight, but we go through a lot with the, with the students. Um, period one and two, they'll have an induction. Um, they'll get their locker, lock, lock uh, have their locks as well. I do recommend they practice them um, and potentially get some this year so they can practice over the holidays. They get their um, timetable as well. Um, period three and four, you'll meet your teachers. So it's basically an alternative program on that first Tuesday. Um, and then they'll have, um, they would have lunch on that day. I'm going on a regular day here. Um, but they have their recess as a decent break. So obviously still bring food um, like you would normally bring for primary school. Um, and bring your pencil case and exercise books. You don't need to bring all of your books on the first day um, because you're going to have a sore back. But if you do it digitally, like Mr. Goebel said, then you will just have your laptop. You will probably won't be set up with your laptop on the first day. Um, so I would even say you don't need to bring your laptop on the first day, but um, we will let you know when we have the laptop session where we get the students on to Compass and get logged onto our system. So I would just say right now, do not bring your laptop on the first day of school. All right, so technology and getting in communication with us. So a lot of our communication, of course, you can call through to the house office, but you can um, go on to Compass. You can email teachers through there. Um, it's complete. It's great. You have a news feed. You might have had that at primary school with your child now. Um, we have our website, our Facebook page. I recommend you all join. That's our nice, fun um, celebration site Let's, so you can see what we do at the college. Um, and that's really, really great as well. Sorry. So, oh, yeah. And, yeah, you can see a little snapshot of that. And, yeah, so please like us. We like more likes. All right, so that's the end of the official um, the official <laughs> presentation. Um, just a couple of questions I just wanted to go over. So just um, class sizes, I said um, no more than 25, but we try to keep them at 21 to 22. Um, I hope I answered the question around um, classes and primary schools that they come from. Um, what do most people do... Um, Dave, do you think around digital or normal books? Sorry, I'll just unmute everyone. Don't know why I have the power here. <laughs> uh, most people probably do normal books at this stage. Um, I think it's just that cultural shift into digital. I would prefer digital myself because it takes up less room, but then it adds that extra element of needing to bring laptops every day. But that's what we want. So um, we really want to build up our digital presence. Um, so I would, um, it's really probably it's more normal books now. Um, I would love to see more digital textbooks. It's just easier. It's personal preference really, isn't it? Um, it is. Can I just add a little bit more there? The textbook. The digital textbooks aren't sold currently without the normal books. 
So you have to get both when you buy them. Um, they don't, for the year seven levels and the lower levels, they don't offer them one or the other. So you do get the code for digital with the normal textbook. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another couple of things was um, mobile phones. So like primary school, um, I mean, some of you might not have one yet, but if you're getting one for high school, um, you cannot have your mobile phone um, out and playing with it. It needs to be in your locker. So in your bag, in your locker, we hold no responsibility if they get broken or damaged at school. Um, if students need to call home, they can go to their house office and communicate through there. We really want to discourage text messaging, messaging parents through the day. We want to really just go to the house so we can be informed and help um, yeah, help support the student. Um, I think we mentioned music in class. Did we mention that? Yep, yeah, so that's already been mentioned. First aid. So if a child needs to take medicine um, or has some sort of injury, touch wood, um, we do have first aid at the school. Um, so there is definitely, like primary school, um, we have that same process here. And if you need to take medis uh, medication, um, that can be, that's fine as well. Uh, no phones on camp as well so the teachers take lots of photos um, but it just encourages people to um, yeah be social uh, so students will be given a timetable when they start now at first for the first week um, we will collect the students so the teacher will come and collect the students outside the library so we'll find the library is the central point of the school and we'll make sure that everyone knows where the library is the teachers will come and get them for every lesson until we get to um, at the end of the week and then they would get a written timetable. So actually learn how to read a timetable on paper, but then it will go onto their compass as well. So um, they will get a paper copy of that. Um, so, yeah, so as I said, with classes, if you are coming from with primary school, um, we will liaise with your primary school about who works well together and things like that. Um, but yeah, you won't be in the same class with everyone from your primary school um, because we want to mix it up and, and have you to meet, make you meet new people as well. The security on lockers. So um, that's where you need your lock. So that's why we do recommend the combination lock because um, we have a master key. So if you buy them through the school, you just buy them from the front office. If they can't open it or something jams, um, we can actually come and open it and, and fix it. And it can last them until year 12. So we would recommend the combination lock. Um, but if the lock needs to be actually locked, uh, we have had lots of students that decide not to put a lock on their locker. Um, and we do not recommend that because that's when things um, can go missing because they're not keeping that secure. If your younger, if your sorry, older sibling is in Flynn House, Greenhouse, then yes, you will be in Flynn House. So if you know that, then you'll you'll find that out. Buddy wise, um, so we do have, um, yeah, you can buy a lock this year as well. <clears throat> Buddy wise, we have our student leadership team. So they will do a lot of um, support with you, especially in term one with lots of different um, activities and things like that. So you will get to meet some of the older kids. And also with the house structure, with the vertical system, um, you do meet a lot of the older kids within your house as well. Um, I was just going to mention, um, I think today enrolment forms and camp forms were due. It's okay if it's tomorrow. Um, that is fine. Okay. So as long as we get them, it's not like you can't come after that. So just make sure you just keep, get them in as soon as possible. Okay. Was there anything else there? I was just going to mention with the locks, as Vanessa said, if you can get them this year, they do take a lot of practice. Um, but once you get it, it's easy. The best thing about buying the school locks as well is we've got a master list of the combinations. So the students will forget them. And we can always remind them um, and give them their combinations again, which is always really useful. Um, school opens at, uh, well, to be honest, the gates um, open from about 8 o'clock. Um, but we do recommend uh, we have yard duty from 8.30. So from 8.30 onwards, we think is a good time to come to school. Yeah, come to the front office to get, um, get the lock. Um, yeah, so lockers, we do have surveillance cameras in them um, for security reasons as well. So um, you can, yeah, we can be rest assured that we do have some security cameras at school. 
Um, so if there is issues with children and um, having a, a difficulty with their asthma, etc., cetera, um, I, there will be a teacher nearby. So telling the, the nearest teacher um, or telling a friend and then we'll get some support. So from the house um, and that type of thing. So they're not left by themselves. I know it, feel, it probably feels like they're going to be, but there will always be a teacher around um, to, to support the students. Um, and the best thing to do is just ask the question um, as well. Okay, I think that's it. If you have any other major questions, um, if you can contact the college, um, that would be fantastic. But thank you so much for, um, for coming. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you on orientation day. Thank you, everyone. See you later.